These are the dragons, the five multimillionaire investors on their way to the den. There, tonight, they will once again make or break the business dreams of dozens of budding entrepreneurs. Quality is rubbish. It really is amateur time. That's just completely ludicrous. My main concern is actually you. Can you please explain to us why we should even ask you another question? I've just been amazed at how badly you've presented this. <laughs> The Dragons have all it takes to be successful. Five of Britain's most enterprising and wealthy business people, they've all built up their own fortunes from scratch. James Kahn made his millions building a global business in the recruitment industry, and he now heads an international private equity firm. The £200 million business empire of Glaswegian entrepreneur Duncan Bannatyne includes hotels, casinos and health clubs. Deborah Meaden earned her fortune in the holiday and leisure industry in the West Country. Theo Pafitis is a retail magnate who's transformed the fortunes of high street brands like Ryman, La Senza, Partners and Contessa. And one of Britain's best known entrepreneurs, Peter Jones, has built up a multi-million pound empire with a business portfolio that ranges from telecoms and leisure to property and media. In the den, the dragons are ready to back the right businesses with their own money. But tonight, will anyone convince them to invest? Here in the dragon's den, our five multimillionaire investors are ready to scrutinise and interrogate the next batch of hopeful entrepreneurs all desperate to secure cash backing for their business ideas and inventions. It's the dragon's own money at stake, so only the best ideas will succeed. Let's see how Sarah Liu from Brighton will get on. She's asking for £35,000. Hello everyone, um, my name is Sarah Lee and today I'm asking um, for £35,000 investment for 20% equity in my product, the You Do Doll. The You Do Doll is the first ever make your own doll. It doesn't have to be part of a boy band or a girl band or anything like that at all. Have a doll made of you at home by yourself using your computer and printer and scanner. The You Do Doll comes with obviously the blank doll, you can put anyone's face on it at all by using transfer papers that are inside the box. It also comes with some clothing. Pair of trousers and a skirt. Uh, so it can be a boy or a girl, so it's unisex, or both if you're that way inclined. And a t-shirt as well. Not only do you personalise a doll, you also personalise a t-shirt and make your own doll. From, from doing my test market, there's two strands that I found to the actual product. One is the gift giving part. You know, the uh, amount of people I've seen receive these have been like, oh, my own little mini me, and going, oh, lovely. The other side of it is the egomania part of it. And um, recently I've noticed lots of people buying it and making mini miniature dolls of themselves and making them look really out there, really, really different. And so to accommodate that on the website, um, we've created an online fashion boutique where you can buy extra add-ons for your doll. I'd like to basically show you the product up close and personal. I'm handing these out. Are there any questions? In a bid to help secure £35,000 for a 20% stake in her new business, Graphic designer Sarah Liu has given the dragons their own versions of her novelty dolls. A tactic which has just backfired as they've now become completely distracted by the effigies of themselves. You see what Theo's done to mine? <laughs> <laughs> What's it, Barnet? What do you think? That, is that better? What have you done to it? Can I... How good is that? Is that a moustache bit or, or, or bogey? Oh, moustache. <laughs> <laughs> See? Those are fun. Sarah, <laughs> let's get serious for a minute. How much are they? Um, they retail at 19.99. What? Yes. 19.99? Are you joking? No, not at all. 20 quid? Yeah, they're selling at 20 quid as we speak. How many have you sold? Um, I've sold 810 um, in three and a half weeks. I have quite large companies. I've got Topshop involved. On Topshop? So, yeah, I've got Topshop. Paid right. and all done and dusted. Um, 
I, I want those dot com, gadgets.co.uk, needapresent.co.uk, and they've, um, they've all bought them from you yeah. and give you the money. Yes, all paid for, and I've just had an order this morning for another two hundred. At what price? Um, at um, eight, an average of eight pound thirty. So how much money did you make out of those? Six thousand nine hundred pounds. Sarah has recaptured the dragon's attention with impressive early sales figures. James Khan wants to drill down further into her finances. OK, so if you walk into Topshop, they're selling this as a kind of a regular product, are they? No, basically they've, um, they've ordered it in as a run-up to when they do their Christmas order. So basically they're not in the shops right now, but it has been paid for and everything. Um, they go out in the next couple of weeks. And what does it cost you to, to buy this? Um, at the moment, uh, they're being made in-house at home, uh, £5.71. So these are dog. currently being made at home by... Yes, by my auntie, <laughs> my family and friends. <laughs> oh, yeah. really? Yeah. This is, it, this is what I mean. It's very... I've, I've just started up and like, things have happened so quickly that I don't even know where to begin to like, take a breath no, in. I take it you're just having these boxes manufactured locally somewhere? Yes. But if you bought this in China or Taiwan, then it would cost you virtually nothing, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's true. Sarah is coping well under the scrutiny of the dragons. But marketing expert Deborah Meaden has something on her mind. Let's talk about the numbers. Because when we're looking at return on investment, the value somebody puts on their business depends on how quickly we can get the investment, how quickly that investment actually dies. And I think you've got quite a short window of opportunity here. So what does your model say this is going to do? How many are you going to sell and when? Basically, um, at the end of my third year, that's when, I, like, that's when you would get a return on your money, which I expect you to double that. At See, that's that really interesting because I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think by year three, this will be done and dusted. But there's um, Yuji Doll as it is, is what we see it as now. Um, I'm trying to create a brand out of it. Have you got other ideas already stacked up? Yes, I have. Lots of variations. I mean, like, they're, they're basically mini replicas of us. And how much scope does an individual person have? We've got Valentine's Day, we've got Father's Day, we've got, I, I want to make the make your own boy band and girl band, that kind of thing. It's a robust defence, but retail magnate Theo Pafitis is about to drop a bombshell. I think the packaging um, is over-engineered because, as a retailer, trust me, yeah. I do not want to stick something this big up to take that much space on a wall meter okay. for this product. So yeah. that's a problem. Okay. The, you know, the packaging should be half that size. And then you look at, the, look at this and say, well, actually, the quality is rubbish. It really is amateur time. It's meant to look homemade. Oh, trust me, it works. Okay. And those are the reasons I can't back you. So I'm out. Sarah's pitch has suffered an abrupt setback. Will the other dragons share Theo Pafitis's concerns? Sarah, I've, I've, I've had a bit of fun with it. I think it, it, it is fun. But the but for me is that I think you have so many issues to deal with, the things that Theo pointed out. And I think when you sort all of that out, and the expense of doing all of that, that 35000 has gone pretty rapidly. And that's the reason why I wouldn't invest in you. So okay. I'm out. Thank you. Sarah's chances of securing £35,000 for 20% of You Do Dolls are slipping away. Will Deborah Meaden be next to walk away from any deal? I actually agree with everything that Theo, and so I no, should. I, I Theo do. is an extremely experienced I know, this is why right. I, I, I completely... Absolutely yeah. has got it, you know. I what, completely agree as well. And I think you run the risk of this actually being a one Christmas wonder. However, I still like it, and it's fun. So I am going to make you an offer, but I'm going to need a healthy chunk of the business to even take my time to do it. So I'm going to offer you £35,000, and I want 45% of the business. OK. It's a surprise offer and a steep one. Deborah Meadham wants 45% of Sarah's business, more than twice what she was originally offering. But James Kahn and Duncan Bannatyne are still in. Will either of them improve on the offer? I can see the um, the opportunity, um, and I would like to make an offer, Sarah. 
Um, I think I'd like to offer you the whole amount um, for 40% of the equity. Because I think you don't need any help at all. I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. You know, I think you're going to fly. So I think we're both going to make a lot of money together. Sarah, I hope you don't agree that you don't need any help. In an unexpected twist, a bidding war has erupted in the den, with James Khan undercutting Deborah Meaden by 5%. But both dragons still want a huge chunk of Sarah's company. Will Duncan Bannatyne enter the fray with a better offer? No, I'm, I'm trying to make this work. But the more I look at it and look at um, James's offer, I think it's, it's a great offer. And I don't think I can beat it. So I'm going to have to say um, I'm going to decline, so I'm okay. out. Thank you. Sarah still has two rival offers on the table. Can she now gain the upper hand and negotiate the warring investors down on their equity demands? Deborah, would you like to add anything? Say, so make me better offer or not? <laughs> no, to be honest, I think, it, I think I've made you a very good offer. Okay. i tell you why. Unlike James, I think you do, and I think you know you need a, quite a bit of help in this. Obviously, you'll get some of my time, but I've got absolutely the right person to put onto this and I think we, we would stand a fair shot at making this happen pretty quickly. And um, your background and experience, is it a retail background? My background is very much what makes people work. So, you know, I think I'm not just buying into this particular product, I'm actually looking at, you know, the concept of a brand and a range and, and to be honest with you, you, because I think you will make this work. What I do say, Sarah, is don't make it about the percentage. Can I go away and think about it? It's an agonising decision for the young entrepreneur. Will she sacrifice a massive 45% of her fledgling business to secure the support and cash of marketing expert Deborah Meaden, or be tempted by the better offer but more hands-off approach from James Kahn? Um, and you wouldn't think to go less than 45 at all, not even by 2%, 1%, 1.5%. OK. Um, in that case, um, James, thank you very much for your offer. Um, I'm going to decline, and Deborah, I'd like to accept your offer. Excellent. Well done. Look forward to that. I reckon we're going to have a lot of fun. Sarah has done it. It's early days for You Do Dolls, but she can now move forward with the financial support and business acumen of Deborah Meaden. Well done, Sarah Lou. How are you? Well, well, how are you, more to the point? OK, I think. You had to think about it quite hard, but you, you, you were going to take one of the two offers, weren't you? Yeah, basically, it was just really, really quite hard, because um, both of them were great. Um, obviously, Deborah has got more of the experience that I needed, um, and yeah, hopefully, it'll, I'll build a brand out of it, and it will carry on going. Well, very well done. You, you can phone your aunt now and uh, tell her that the business is going on to a new level, and we'll see how you get on. Thank you very much. <laughs> entrepreneurs set their sights on the lucrative sports and leisure industries, convinced they can make fortunes from their ideas. But selling their vision to the dragons can be a gruelling exercise. Yorkshireman Les Lane hoped to raise £200,000 for a 15% stake in his spot-on golf training aids business by demonstrating the swing plane, designed to help golfers improve their drive. You simply set a golf club up, set the bubble between the two green lines, swing the golf club 280 degrees. If it's on the correct plane, it actually shows you the bubble in the red between the black lines. Duncan Bannatyne wanted a closer look. They want to try it, actually. Not a problem. But Les's valuation landed him in the rough with Peter Jones. Do you know what you're valuing your company at the moment? Um, for the amount we've just asked, just over 1.3 million. But you've sold nothing. You haven't sold one product. 
Would it be fair to say that your strong points are not finance? Yes. It shows. James Khan needed some reassurance from Les. My main concern is actually you. Well, that's why I'm here, because I know what my main concern is, is me. And to grow the company, I need more than £200,000. Yeah. I need somebody who knows how to control the company for me. But that wasn't what the Dragons wanted to hear. You've given me absolutely no reason to hand over my money. I've just been amazed, actually, at how badly you've presented this, and I'm out. <laughs> Chris Mayo from Surrey came up with the idea for her products while teaching school children how to count. She's now looking for £100,000 for a 10% share in her business. Remember, she'll need the Dragons to invest at least the full amount or she'll leave with nothing. My name is Chris Mayo and I would like to ask for £100,000 for a 10% share of Sweet Counter. Sweet Counter is an educational resource company. Um, if I can show you over here, the company is called Sweet Counter because as a teacher I started um, teaching place value using hundreds, tens and units in the form of jars of sweets. Sweets are children's currency. They understand sweets. They understand if somebody has more sweets than them. And place value underpins the whole of our mathematical system. After the first product, I then went on to design lots more products. They're all double laminated. They're all child-centered. But most of all, they're designed to teach a concept. Down here, we have some um, cards to teach number bonds to 10. Now six and four, seven and three, eight and two. Children have to know those number bonds. Now we started off with primary maths, but then we moved into the area of literacy. And if we look at the bottom down here, you can see that we have synthetic phonics, which is the big in thing at the moment. We have the words that the children have to learn, the high frequency words. We moved into foreign languages recently. A nervous Chris Mayo is rambling. She's already over her time limit and she's rapidly losing her audience. Of the English. This market, I think, is going to be huge, even goes into the adult market. The money that I would like to raise, I would like to use it towards buying in a business development manager. I would like to have them explore the areas that I can't get to. Chris, have you, have you described the actual product? Do you think we... Is, is that your presentation? That's... As such, there was Lovely. a little bit more, but I'm afraid Lovely. I... We'll, we'll probably ask some questions, Thank and you. hopefully if you feel we haven't covered it, you have yes. a chance there Thank to you. have covered it. OK. An exasperated Deborah Meaden has brought Chris's pitch for £100,000 in return for 10% of her sweet counter business to a halt. It's not a confidence-inspiring start from the teacher. What I was actually hoping to hear was some numbers I can give you lots of numbers but it's the concept well, no, actually oh you, you can concentrate some... very tightly yep. on a set of numbers that yep. explains to me what you've got which is worth a million pounds potential when I first no, started no no today standing in front of me why is this worth a million pounds? Do you have children? <laughs> no, Chris, you're missing the point. Okay, sorry. Can you please explain to us why we should even ask you another question? Because if you don't have turnover figures and trading well, figures, I, yeah. we, I don't know about anybody else, but <laughs> I'm wasting my time. Right, so I've turned over 213,000 for an 85,000 gross profit and um, 15,000 net profit. Over what period of time? And that was two years ago. It dipped slightly this year. It was 202,000. I've reduced all my overheads, so hopefully the net profit will go up. Chris's overblown company valuation has clearly riled Deborah Meaden. And James Kahn isn't going to let it lie. Uh, Chris, can you just tell me, how long have you been doing this? I started ten years ago, and I did it for three years, but I leased the actual intellectual property rights to another company. 
and the company had it for three years and the numbers didn't add up. Okay, so, so let's just back. go back. Hang so on. So really four years. Okay, did you get paid for the leasing rights? I did. And what and, did you get for that? Um, well, no, I got paid 15% royalties. Do you know what they were selling on an annualised basis? Not enough for me and that's why I got it back. Okay, so you then took it back and then I you've did. now run it for three years. Three or four years. And I developed these in the meantime. I'd gone back to full-time okay. teaching. Chris, just please let me ask the Sorry. questions because we'll be much quicker that way. And in that three years, you're averaging 200 grand a year turnover. Um, I, I don't know if it's an average. This year and last year, yes. The year before it was slightly less, but, but uh, it's increased each year apart from... Okay, and averagely, the profit you're making is, what, 15,000 Only net. because I plough it straight back in to produce more resources. Then, Chris, you should have come in with a far more realistic proposition. But I think to be standing in front of us with some crazy number for a business that you've demonstrated over 10 years you can't make any money out of, because it just about gives you a living, I can't understand how you believe that an investor... A 10% stake is ever going to get his money back or make a return. So I wish you luck, but for me, I can't invest in you, Chris. Okay. So I'm out. Chris has lost her first dragon, and Deborah Meaden has heard something that may well sway her decision. Chris, can I just? I've got one, please, really quick question. This person who sold these under license. Were they an individual or were they a big company? They were a, um, a company with about 16 people, but no one can do it as well as me uh, at, okay. at that time. <laughs> um, you, were, you were getting a message there. They had a sales force of 16 people and they didn't sell enough to pay you your license fee and keep you happy. You've been taught a lesson. This product will sell a bit, but not a lot. Okay, I'm out. It's a real setback for Chris. The chances of securing the £100,000 are diminishing fast. Will Peter Jones look on the investment opportunity more kindly? Chris, how are you selling this? We sell directly via mail shop, via the internet, and via the exhibitions that I go to, where people run okay, to so get I'm, to I've, us. I've just turned up an exhibition now, and I say, Hello, Chris. What have you got to sell? You wouldn't get round us because we're like a honeypot. Yeah. Someone yeah. described us as a honeypot. You're going to have a cup of tea. I just want to know what we've got here. Well, I've got She ain't going to tell you, is she? I've got Because she wanted to tell you. She should have told you half an hour ago. That'd be hard on the woman. Yes, I was going to say, excuse the me. I'm not, of our been, I'm not being hard, but hold on. You're being realistic and businesslike, yeah, well, and that is what I like, uh, and that is why I need investment. Oh, so you like, like him for being harsh? No. Well, I can be harsh. This is bloody worthless. I'm sorry. I didn't get to the end of the presentation. I'm sorry, and I'm sure you appreciate nerves. I need to buy in help to well, yeah. have the support to put it on a bigger scale. Um, no, you need to finish. Scale. Peter asked you Sorry. a really, you know, important question. Can you finish it? Sorry, I've forgotten the question. <laughs> <laughs> Chris has lost control and the den is descending into chaos. Duncan Bannatyne is ready to say where he stands. Chris, this is ridiculous. I've got a little boy called Tom who's five, and a little girl called Emily who's eight, and they're doing homework now, and I do homework with them. Are they good at maths? They're, they're okay, they're just normal children. But you know, for you to bizarrely say that you've got the intellectual property rights to all this, you can't possibly have. You're saying you've got the intellectual property rights to a number eight. design rights yellow, to these particular A yellow number products. eight. So nobody else can make a yellow number eight. But they match the number two, so number bonds to ten. But so if you've got an eight and a two, that and was a lesson. That was a plus sign. That means lesson. that you've got the rights that no one else can put an eight and a two and a plus sign between them. You, but that's that's one of the things that, that is less um, copy written. Less copy. There's, nothing, that, the wrong there's nothing there that can be copied. There's nothing there that my children aren't using in their homework every single day at the moment. And they use these sort of resources. To use. A number two and a number eight, and add them together to get ten. It's more than that. Is it? <laughs> yeah. uh, Chris, thank you very much for your offer, but I'm going to turn you down, therefore I am out. Thank you. Chris, I may as well cut in. I love what you do, and I love the fact that these things in schools are really important. Thank you, because that's important to me. The, d the disappointment is obviously trying to make a business out of that and scale it. I don't think you can ever make money out of this, so that's the reason why I'm out. Thank you. It's all but over for Chris. Only Theo Pafitis now stands between her and failure in the den. 
I think everybody in this room accepts that the education of our children is of paramount importance. So nobody, nobody at all can possibly criticise what you're attempting to do. But you've just got to understand that your passion for what you're doing sounds to me like your Achilles heel, because you don't stop to listen. My strength is my enthusiasm, my strength is my experience, my strength is um, a group of products that I know a lot appreciate, you're people doing it appreciate. Now. Sorry, you're my doing weakness. It. You're I'm doing it. Again. My weakness is not She's going having. To carry on doing it. You are going to <laughs> Sorry. carry on, aren't you? You're doing it. You're, it's your weakness as well. I think the business itself is something that might be for you as a cottage industry, but I don't actually believe it's something that's investable for an investor like me. You know, I commend what you're doing and your enthusiasm. It's not for me, so I'm going to very quickly now tell you that I'm out. Thank you very much. Okay. Chris leaves with some sound advice, but without the £100,000 she was counting on to help grow her business. Chris, well, what an unruly class they were for you. It's a bit of an ordeal, to say the least, I have to say. You, you've had a pretty interesting encounter with the dragons. Where are you going to take the business now? Continue in the same vein. and I was quite happy with the way business was going, but as far as getting into the big time, that's going to have to wait. OK. We'll see how you get on. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very indeed. much. The Dragons are often asked if they're briefed on pitches before they come up the stairs. The answer is always no. It's up to the entrepreneurs to impress the Dragons there and then with their products and plans and persuade them to back them with their own cash. Keen gardener Michael Whittam from Kent was hoping to tempt the Dragons to take a 15% stake in his alternative fertiliser operation, Caveman's Bat Guano, in return for £50,000. Bat Guano is basically 100% natural organic fertiliser of bat droppings, animal remains and minerals from the caves where it's harvested. Theopophetus needed to get down to basics. The whole substance of this is bat poo. Yeah, bats poo and also minerals from the caves. And these caves, they're full of... They're full of guano, so yes. Duncan Bannatyne was dubious about some of Michael's declarations. You're making some fantastic claims on your tin. The bats are not fed by humans, the miners are looked after. Have you actually been to the Philippines? No, not yet. So you don't know what conditions the miners are working in? I've got some photos of them and basically they're, they're very, they look very happy with their job. And Peter Jones simply couldn't see the company growing fast enough. What makes me want to invest is could I invest in the person to go off and run the business or do I love the product enough that I think it could fly and I could add some value? And I can't find any of those things unfortunately, right. so I'm out. Okay. <laughs> Working mum, Masuma Fatima, wanted... something to solve a problem that doesn't exist. There were few words of comfort from Deborah Meaden. It's bulky, it's ugly, it's a backward step. Do you think it's better than the old one? No. No. And Duncan Bannatyne quashed Massimo's hopes of investment once and for all. You're sticking something that's been invented and uninvented it. The only thing that you have achieved is this. You will be in the list of the top five worst inventions that came in Dragon's Dance. I'm out. Goodbye. So far tonight, just one entrepreneur has walked away from the den with an investment. Coming up, will the Dragons back any of these ideas and individuals? You're directly conflicted in your product. You're never, ever, ever going to make this sort of money. You're projected. I am desperately trying to find ways in which it makes sound economic commercial sense.
Father of two, Chris Lomas, came up with his invention while training his children to use the bathroom. He thinks he's found a gap in the market and is now seeking a £200,000 investment for a 20% equity share. Pleased to meet you all. My name is Chris Lomas from On Target Infant Training, and I'm here today to request £200,000 in exchange for 20% equity in the business. I would like to start off by asking you all a question. Uh, are there any among you today who are currently toilet training? And if not you, what about your children? Toilet training remains one of the biggest challenges that face parents with young infants. It's a challenge that my wife and I faced when we were toilet training our son. At that time, I was convinced that I could find something on the market that would help my son engage in the process. And I was shocked to find that after searching the high street and the internet, nothing actually existed. So I was forced to set about uh, creating something myself. At this point, I'd like to introduce you to Max. Uh, Max is the world's first antibacterial infant training device that helps young infants progress from nappies to toilet in a fun and hygienic environment. Uh, simply placed inside the toilet bowl, uh, Max is strategically weighted to ensure that the face is always facing up so as to help to engage the child's interest. Effectively, what Max does is helps children to see toilet training not as an interruption to play, but as an extension to play. Max isn't just suitable for boys, as you might think. When girls start to use the toilet, uh, they perch, uh, which causes its own mess. Uh, Max encourages girls to sit back and it engages their interest as well. This is a product that gets children out of nappies and it makes sure that uh, what is meant to go down the toilet does go down the toilet. Any questions? Does it sing a song when you hit the target? Does it explode with fireworks? It, it does shout Eureka? But those, those are development opportunities. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We've actually got to uh, try The dragons might be amused by Max the toilet trainer, but Chris Lomas has sunk £70,000 of his own money into this invention. And he's deadly serious about his pitch. He's after £200,000 in return for 20% equity in his company. Can he refocus the dragon's attention on the business? Have you, have you actually sold any of these? Yes. Uh, we've Give sold, me some numbers then. We've Go sold 45,000 units to date. We've sold into Superdrug, Sainsbury's, Boots, Waitrose were on trial, Tesco's were advanced negotiations with. What's that in revenue terms? Uh, £134,000. And how much profit have you made out of that? 50%. Uh, really? This year. And what are you forecasting for this year? Uh, we're forecasting half a million. Turnover? Turnover. And making? Net profit, we're um, hoping for 20% in our first year. So you reckon you're going to make about 100 grand? Yeah. All levity has vanished with the revelation of Chris's impressive early sales figures. James Kahn wants more detail on the retailer's take-up of the training aid. So Superdrug took how many to start with? 17,000. Have they sold all 17,000? Uh, there's um, one or two lying around, I'm sure, but uh, that, that's the indication. Chris, yeah. who's reordered? Uh, Boots have reordered. Uh, we uh, went on trial with Superdrug. What was Boots' the... original order? Boots uh, ordered a thousand packs. And what's their reorder? A uh, thousand packs. Why have they only reordered a thousand? Because this is about what consumers think, um, because this is the, the real challenge. No, this is fact. What, I hope what comes out of your mouth now is not you've spoken to. No. I no. want facts. No. After two weeks of launch on Amazon.co.uk, we were the fastest selling baby product. And you can't, you can't massage those figures uh, because they have a, a, a league table of what is selling the fastest. And after two weeks, we were the fastest selling baby How product. How many did you sell, Chris? Um, 
We've sold over a thousand packs into Amazon. Chris has stood his ground under interrogation from Deborah Meaden. But is he doing enough to allay any concerns and prize an investment from the Dragons? Chris, you might find it helpful if I let you know where I am. Um, you have presented very well. You have answered. You've held yourself to account very well. You answer questions very well. Um, and I should be feeling really confident about you, but I'm not. And I'm not because some of the things you say just don't hang right. I do not <coughs> understand why brands like Superdrug and Boots would not, if they found this product flying off the shelf, why they would not have them restocked. And to be honest, the fact that Boots only restocked at 1,000, I take as very bad news, not good news, because that's tiddly, tiddly numbers. So I'm afraid I'm out. Chris has lost his first dragon, and Duncan Bannatyne is ready to have his say. The way you've stood up to that um, verbal attack from Deborah was fantastic. But I, I just don't see this product being something that's going to change the world. I can't understand your it's obsession with it. Did something happen when you were a child to yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. uh, I was actually brought up in a very, very deprived background, uh, but certainly bullied at school. And uh, this, this is where my passion comes from, to make a real difference. So my children don't grow up in the, you know, in the deprived background that I have. Well, uh, you know, if you came along with something different, or if you knocked on my door looking for a job, you know what I mean? You... Thank you. No problem. It means a lot, actually. But the product, I don't believe in. Right. So for that reason, I'm going to say okay. I'm out. Thank you. Chris, initially, I'm thinking this is a daft product. Why is this guy here? But if you manage to sell this product so well, I think any other products you're going to get your hands on, you will do well. Mm -hmm. So, you don't need me. I beg to differ, but... And because of that, I'm going to pass on this golden opportunity and wish you the very best of luck. Thank I'm out. Thank you. margin we're, we're realizing is between 60 65 percent good margin for that volume mm -hmm. um, on the one hand I'm listening to you and I'm very impressed mm -hmm. I'm looking at this and I'm confused but then your facts speak for themselves mm -hmm. um, so I'm prepared Chris to put up half the money thank you um, I think I'd like 25 percent for that Okay. It's a dramatic turnaround. James Khan has offered Chris £100,000, but under the rules of the den, Chris must get the total amount asked for or leave with nothing. Will Peter Jones keep his business dream alive? When you actually try to look from sitting in this chair what you want to invest in, it's like presentation, individual, the pitch, how well they've done, the questions and answers, could you work with the person? Then you get to the idea, is it innovative, could it sell? And you've actually demonstrated that whole complete package. You are seriously, seriously investable as an individual. At £200,000, even though I potentially have the opportunity of splitting it with James, is a huge amount of money and I don't believe this has the potential to give me that return. It's the only reason why I'm out. Chris has one last hope. Can he persuade James Khan to increase his offer to the full amount? James, it is back to you. Um, I would like to ask you, would you be willing to invest the whole amount? For what equity stake? Um, 30%. I don't think I would invest an extra £100,000, Chris, for 5% extra. That doesn't sound very attractive to mm. me. Can you make me an offer? Uh, 
I'm not going to increase the offer, Chris. I was happy to back you at 100,000 and take a punt. Okay. So I think, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to give you all the money you need, Chris. I'm out. Thank, Thank you very thanks. much. Thanks Thank much. you, Chris. Thank you. Good luck. Chris, well it's a bittersweet exit for Chris. The Dragons were more impressed by his business skills and acumen than the idea he wanted them to invest in. If you ever want a demonstration of how to pitch in here, that is it. Chris, well done on what they obviously thought was a very good pitch. Thank you. W would you have taken a 50% offer if uh, James had made it in the end? Um, it would have been difficult, um, but then you'd have to be mad not to, to at least consider it. Are you going to kick yourself that you asked for a whole £200,000? A, because you may not need it, and B, because it was more than they really wanted to put into the product? Um, I think, in retrospect, it would have been great uh, to walk away with less, for less percentage in the business, purely, uh, to invite that expertise. So I, I think it's, it's going to be things that I think about when I'm trying to sleep at night. entrepreneurs who enter the den are passionate about their own ideas. Sadly, very few of them manage to inspire the same level of enthusiasm in the Dragons. Dawn Dines from Devon delivered an eye-catching pitch for a £100,000 investment in her business, Swanky or Spanky, aimed at safety-conscious nightclubbers. We have a global problem in issues concerning the relationship between sexual health and alcohol consumption. My aim is to empower society to make choices for their own personal safety. First, they demonstrated a gadget designed to prevent pints being spiked with harmful substances. One of my first products, protective covers for glasses. So I've got to take the cover off every time I want to take a sip of my drink. You do. That's just completely ludicrous. <laughs> Undaunted, Dawn moved on to her anti-spiking bottle top accessory. This comes in the form of a sticker, which is placed over the bottle. If anybody was to tamper with the product, it would easily tear or rip. The straw okay. went in the bottle. So how do you get the straw back out? You don't. You, you could probably away. pierce this and maybe drink through it. It does defeat the object of the tad, doesn't it? And finally, the reason for the scantily clad companions was revealed, Dawn's special range of pants for nightclubbers. As you can see, we have a little pocket in the nape of the back, which is to carry a condom. This is to try to make safe sex a more fun and fashionable thing to do. But Deborah Meaden thought the dual purpose underwear would backfire. I'm entirely convinced that it will encourage guys coming up, going down to the back of girls' trousers and going, check whether or not they've got a condom in the back, because if they have, she's up for it. You're directly conflicted in your products. Right. And for that reason, I'm out. Avid barbecuer Philip Metcar from York also wanted a £100,000 investment, this time in a culinary invention, the kebab queue. Into the base, you place the food ingredients that you want on your kebab. Press down and push the skewer through, lifting off the lid, it reveals your formed kebab. Theo Pafitis didn't warm to the idea from the start. I'm struggling to understand the purpose of this product. Uh, the research tells us that the consumer doesn't like handling meat and they believe that making kebabs is desirable but difficult. Peter Jones thought he could do better with just a skewer and some tongs. Now I've done that in 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Why do I need a box? It's not a great looking kebab to be fair. Well no, I could carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Fill it up, talk is cheap, listen up I don't know where we went wrong, but I feel I'm shaking these walls, yeah Nothing safe, gotta take cover Still the love, we just make glitter Running and running, yeah, we got off track Now we under attack Next into the den, Emmy Matthews and Ed Stevens, who have experience of working in the gaming industry and believe they found a new way to make money in a highly competitive market. 
They're seeking an investment of £200,000 for a 10% stake in their company. Hi, I'm Ed, this is Emmy, and we're here to ask for £200,000 worth of investment in our company, Gaming Alerts, for 10% stake. Gaming Alerts is the umbrella site for four comparison sites, Poker Alerts, Bingo Alerts, Casino Alerts, and Bookie Alerts. Each comparison site um, provides users with the latest odds, offers, um, tournament information um, to our punters. And in the same way that Confuse.com or Money Supermarket uh, makes its money by referring customers to uh, sites like Norwich Union, we make our money by referring customers to William Hill, PokerStars and the like. Basically what um, we've got, what our unique selling point is, is in our name, Gaming Alerts. Users can download from any one of our five websites, um, Gaming Alerts, their desktop. It's completely free. And... They can opt in to receive poker, casino, bingo, or sports betting alerts, or any combination of the above. Just like Sky and BBC News Alerts deliver the latest breaking news to their users, we do the same with ours. And we're obviously delivering them the best offers, whether that be special betting opportunities on a sporting event, best odds, um, promotions from bingo suppliers, where to find the best free roll tournaments for poker. That's the sort of idea. This shows how the alert looks. Obviously, it sits down here on your desktop. It will pop up. There's advertising in here, and then obviously the message in here. You click through that, go straight to the website, and we make um, our referral fee from the operators. That's it? Yep. That's it. Business partners Emmy Matthews and Ed Stevens have delivered a confident pitch for £200,000 of investment in their online gaming alerts company. They're offering 10% equity in return. But casino owner Duncan Bannatyne is already dubious about some of their potential markets. I understand it in a poker or casino site, but I don't understand it in our three sites. Bingo? Bingo is massive. There's like three million people playing bingo in bingo halls. There's oh, everyone's moving give on. Give over. No, it's true. It's people are going to sit at home playing bingo. OK, stop there, please because you're about to insult Mrs. P. She uh, plays Mrs. bingo Mrs. online every single night. Growing market. Does she? Yep. It's a growing market. What's the statistics for bingo? Just to now we've started a conversation, online bingo. Well, the statistics? Um, I think it's about two million um, a year playing online bingo. Two million? A year. People? Yeah, it's huge. If you go into the chat rooms, the online bingo chat rooms, it is manic. Let's look at the projections for the next two years then, or the next three years. Yeah. What are you projecting in turnover and profit? Um, for year one, yep. it's 1.2 million turnover, 740 net profit. Yep. Year two is 2.1 million turnover and yep. 1.5 million net. Yep. And year three, it's 3.8 million turnover and 3.0 net. That sounds pie in the sky. Um, then the top. Um, affiliates that we'll be competing with are easily making a million pounds a year, so we feel it's easily achievable. The duo are standing up well to the scrutiny of the dragons. Deborah Meaden wants to know more about the two young entrepreneurs. You sound like you know quite a bit about the gaming industry. What's your background? We've actually got two companies, both in online gaming. Um, one of them is a media planning and buying company, and we've been running that for a year and a half. And this one, we've, we set the company up in October 2005, but we've been concentrating on the other one until February this year. Who's running the other business? Well, at the moment, Ed looks after most of Jack Media, and I look after most of Gaming Alert. Can you just explain to us, the other company, exactly what it does? It's a media agency, so we plan and buy on behalf of our clients. So they would come to us with a marketing budget, and we would take that and we would buy the best media we can to generate them a return. We use the money you made in your other company. We feel we've put, you know, £40,000 or £35,000 of what is pretty much our own money from Jack Media into it. And 
you know, we're happy to continue to do so, but we've also put a lot of time and effort into it as well. And what we're saying is we don't have £200,000. At the moment it's growing organically and we want to kind of kickstart it really. To reassure the Dragons with their business credentials, Emmy and Ed have drawn on their experience with a company they already own and run. But the ploy seems to have had the opposite effect. Emmy, Ed, is there any way that you would consider including the company that you've developed in the media side in the overall deal? No. Why? Two separate companies entirely. Different shares. Because I think you've got a conflict of interest here. You've got a company running at the moment, so it's giving you nice incomes, and now you want to think that actually I'll try and mug five dragons for 200 grand. And we're not trying to do that at all. No, no, I think actually you'd be very cleverly be able to manipulate the situation, because I can see you working 70, 80% on your other business, and this, I've got 200 grand in this, and I'm the one that's got to pick the baby up and make it run. But, but we wouldn't. I mean, obviously, we'd have agree if you were to invest in us, we'd have agreements in place that said either, the, you know... The, the agreements, agreements like that just don't work. Look, uh, I think there's a, that for me is the biggest issue. There's a conflict of interest in your current business to what you're trying to launch here, and that's about management, time, and effort, and that's why I'm out. An infuriated Peter Jones is the first dragon out. Deborah Meaden was initially impressed by the pair. Will she see past the concerns of her rival? You're very impressive. You're both very impressive, I think. Your background, you. You've, you clearly know a lot about the business. And you've got track record. But you've left me with a real problem. You've made it virtually impossible for me to invest in you. If I was going to make you an offer, I would have to have so much of the business that I know the end result would be you would lose interest in this business because you'd given away a large percentage share and you'd focus attention on your other business. What kind of stake are you talking about? Oh, I would want 40% of this business. So I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm genuinely really sorry, but I'm out. Two dragons have walked away from any deal, and Emmy and Ed's ambitious plans for investment are falling apart. Now, James Kahn is ready to show his hand. Guys, shall I tell you where I am? <clears throat> yep. Um, the existing success on what you've done already is not that impressive. You rattle off the three-year numbers of what you're going to make, and I'm not really buying into that. I, I find that just a little bit overly ambitious. And for those reasons, I'm out. Emmy, um, Ed, I understand exactly what you're trying to do here because I have been approached by a few online gaming companies who want access to my membership base. Yeah. But for reasons I won't go into, I've always turned it down. Um, but because I've had so many approaches, I know just how very, very competitive this market is. There's a lot of people doing this. You're not the only people doing it. You're never, ever, ever going to make the sort of money you projected. So that's why I'm going to say I'm out. The duo's pitch has nosedived into disaster. Theo Pafitis is their last hope. That just leaves me who's sitting here, and I've written on my book here, Rock in the Hard Place, because that's really where I am. I would love to invest in you two. Seriously. I am desperately trying to find ways in which it makes sound economic commercial sense. So I'm going to give you one chance to come up with something that might tempt me to make this more commercial. Because to. <laughs> Magnet knows he holds all the cards. The duo were originally offering 10% equity. Will they improve on it enough to clinch the deal?
Okay. Right. Now, before you say it, you've got one chance. I'm not going to sit here negotiating. No, I know. I know. What we... Originally, we'd said we'd go no higher than 20, but we feel that we'd love to have you on board if you'd take 25%. Please. I need you now to go to the back again. <laughs> you want us to go to the back? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Hmm. And this is the final offer. It's a den first and an extraordinary test of nerve for the young entrepreneurs. Play it wrong and the £200,000 investment from Theo Pafitis is off the table. I hate you're going to go for this because I've just managed to persuade Ed, I pray you do, 30%. That is a compromise because we really didn't want to go above 20. Right. You've got a deal. Emmy and Ed have done it. After a roller coaster ride in the den, they've sacrificed 30% of their company to bring Theo Pafitis and his £200,000 into their business. Well done. Bye bye. Good luck. Well done, Theo. Great investment. We've seen again that dragons certainly like to take their fair share of equity, but that does have a big upside for an entrepreneur. When the dragons take a chunk of your company, you can be sure you'll get a chunk of their time and attention. If you want to find out more about any of the dragons or see what happens behind the scenes, go to bbc.co.uk forward slash Dragon's Den. Goodbye. Next time on Dragon's Den. Theo Pafitis gives some sound advice. You're not going to go and make the product and then have 20,000 sitting in your back bedroom. That's not clever, is it? And one entrepreneur goes head to head with Peter Jones. You probably will sell a few. And do you know why you'll sell a few? Because there are people that buy rubbish. This is not rubbish, Peter. Learn more from the dragons as they share their business secrets in this book to accompany the series. Stick around, Have I Got News For You is next here on BBC Two, and later a Dragon's Den success story. Remember the doll maker? Sarah Lou joins Richard Bacon on...